Well, it's been hurry up and then wait. We're waiting. We're about 40 minutes early this morning. Zion was doing a little race car maneuvering over the curvy mountains on the way here this morning. Got a little piece here before we get going. We're getting close. We're getting close. But we're starting to see the country that we're going to hunt. Uh, we're kind of starting to get in the mode when you pile all your gear up ready to get on the chopper. It's, it's time to, you start getting serious, I guess. You start getting a feel for it. We're here with Wilderness Quest, which I'm a little suspicious about the name, but it could work out. Zion Pilgrim is our outfitter and guide today, which is, again, we're a little suspicious about the name, but we're gonna we're gonna stick to it and see where it goes. So far, we've had homemade peanut butter, homemade jam, homemade bread. Uh, see what else? Homemade homegrown eggs, bacon. Pretty awesome. So. We're gonna, like I said, stick to it, see how it works. We're excited, we're doing tar and chamois. It's gonna be a good hunt. Um, obviously the dangerous parts on helicopter, you've got your main rotor, you've got the tail rotor at the back and the hot exhaust. So just one thing, ball caps, any loose clothing, make sure you've got it strapped down either in a pack or preferably in a pocket or something not wearing. Um, when he comes in, whenever you're carrying, is we'll load up first, so just don't carry you know, rifles on your shoulder or anything sticking up that could hit the rotors. Roger that. Mike's got a built-in safety kind of mechanism. Yeah. You know, being four foot. The props got to be about right here and then put it down here. I enjoy the mountains, I like being up in the alpine, I enjoy hunting, but I think most of all I enjoy helping other people succeed in achieving their own goals and it's, it's a very gratifying job when you can help other people to achieve their goals with hunting. Relaxing in a way. It's, uh, it's a goal of mine this year that just to just to relax on these hunts and have some fun up here with my brother. We haven't got to do a lot of hunting in the last couple years together, so it's nice to be able to enjoy his company and uh, out of the office type company, which is which is nice. The cool thing about New Zealand, so it's different than Alaska. So Alaska, you fly in the same. 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. You can't, you can't, you can't hunt. hunt. So, you know, here in New Zealand, you know, if it's in the same day, you fly up here. It's like we're gonna go take off. We're gonna do a morning hunt. We'll even have time to do an evening hunt. Yeah, that's right. You know, same day. So that's pretty cool. Saves us a lot of the travel time. We'll get our camp set up, and then we'll we'll do a morning hunt, sort of back down in the open, sort of rolling country with the chamois like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they should be back out again. They tend to run and hide when they hear the choppers, which is a good thing for them. And then uh, there's some good bluff systems around further on. We'll go have a look this afternoon. Okay. Sounds pretty good. So where are we setting up camp? Right here. Right here. Yeah. Find well, a let's do it. spot. I don't think there's anything better than a homemade lunchbox. Homemade candy bars, homemade bread, pita bread. Mm. I said don't eat it in one setting, but pretty cool. Nice. Add it to your collection. It's not every day you get to eat lunch looking at the ocean and Mount Cook behind you. It's pretty sweet. I don't even know what ocean that's called. We're just going to grab a bite to eat. 
and then we're going to walk up this ridge behind us start glassing for some chamois sound like they've seen a few on the on the way in on the first run so there's some animals around here we just got to get some food in the belly and and head out we started about 4 30 this morning and it's about 11 now so more traveling and we're finally getting to hunt so after a couple of days of getting here this is not good we were just over there glassing we said there was no animals over there i wanted to go up there he just got the spot and scope out i predict not good well i've got an excuse i've got 10 power binoculars Aaron was over there. He had 15s. He should have been able to see anything. So we were looking for chamois, okay? There's a big bull tar over here at a thousand yards. That's why we didn't see it. We were looking for something else. Black, not brown. I mean, even if we got 100 yards, it'll probably... Let's do it. The angle or not? Let's close 100 yards and get Mike a shot at that guy. Aaron actually had been glassing over there and said he didn't see anything. Um, Zion came right behind him and, and spotted some tar. I think it, to Aaron's defense, we were actually looking for chamois, not tar. We spotted one bull in a very shootable position. Uh, we closed the distance a couple hundred yards, got a little better vantage on him so we could see his full body. Yeah, still there. Doesn't take very long to lose a bunch of elevation around here. That bull from up top was about nine something. Got a pretty stiff wind blowing up this canyon. So we thought we better close a couple hundred yards. Looks like he just bedded back down, but he's right here still. One of the things that you notice when you when you gear up to shoot at distance, and we're, we don't always take animals long shot. When we got set up on these tar, we could see one bull bedded in a crevice on a rock, and the odds were when he stood up, he was going to move out of a, a shooting position. So for us, rather than you know go right and circle around and try to close up on the distance and try to get on that tar, which you know from the way that train worked out, we would have been sub 100 yards, and it would have been a fast snap shot, which. I'm per personally, I'm uncomfortable with. I don't like that kind of shooting. So rather than do that, we hiked out on the ridge uh, below us, and that put us kind of across the canyon from that that bull. But what it did was it kind of put us around the canyon and opened everything up, so we had a, a better shot opportunity. Still there, son? You got an angle on it? Yep, he's still there. Got it. Oh yeah, he's still in right there. Yep. Okay, I'm getting 13 minutes even, bro. 760 yards, 13 minutes even. And then for 10 mile an hour wind, you're 3.4 minutes. So five is gonna be one and three quarter. We got lots of time, bro. That's one of the most exciting things about hunting is fair chase. Well, we got guys right here. Yeah, it got dropped off. I mean, yeah. it's fair chase. It's this public is land. Public land. Yeah. And We've either got a really blessed guide or a really lucky guide. I'll take option A. <laughs> We're just going to hang tight till he stands up. And if he stands up, Mike's going to smoke him. We kind of got a little challenge going on this hunt. We, uh, we decided to use the BR2 rangefinder just like anybody would if they were running just a standard MOA scope. So we're not doing turrets. We're not doing shoot to range we're just moa correction just like you pull out your vortex or your night force or your you know uh, zeiss or or bushnell or whatever and you just dial the minutes so we got the range and the moa adjustment is 13 minutes even uh, wind calculated out of the range finder says 3.4 minutes for a 10 mile an hour wind so we're going to hold that we're probably looking at somewhere around a five mile an hour wind so it's a pretty technical shot but i think it's pretty straightforward uh, as long as he gives us a nice broadside shot with a big target area, we're going to be in business. Mike, we come here for one more lunch. Good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to sit up here and glass for Shammy. We'll read it. I'm Garrett Wall with Gunworks. I work with the sales and marketing team. I'm going to offer a couple suggestions 
that I think will help you out a bunch. My, my first tip is, is get out a calendar. Make a schedule. Look at what, what the, the months before your hunt looks like. There's no excuse to not making a, a good plan to get out to the range and shoot. I'm lucky enough to have a range that's just right outside my office. I can shoot out to a thousand yards. I, I understand it's, it's a lot easier for me, but there's, there's no excuse to not be able to get out to the range. What works for me in preparing for my hunts is to shoot a nice group at 200 yards, to shoot a nice group at 400 yards, and carry on out, out to 1,000 yards. Two, four, 650, 850, and 1,000. Work through that progression uh, of shooting a three shot, two or three shot group at each one of those ranges. But as I start at 200 yards, I know I'm gonna hit the 400 yards. And when I hit those 400 yards, I feel very confident I'll hit those 650 yard targets. The goal of this exercise for me is confidence. That you can never start shooting too early and building up that confidence in yourself, your ability, and your equipment uh, that, that you take out with you. Oh, that's a very good bowl. Hey, I think he's moving. Yeah, yeah, he is. It's getting up. Um, got set up, had, had the wind doped, had plenty of time. Um, he stood up and we took a nice shot at it. Give me five. Right in the shoulder, bro. I think you missed by two inches. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> well done. Well done. Hey. Good awesome. spot, man. Hey. It doesn't matter how many times that happens. As soon as they stand up, what happens? Do, 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 do. <laughs> and it just, you gotta mentally tell yourself, all right, just relax, yeah. squeeze it. Don't rush it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Did you see the hair? That's oh. what I noticed out of the whole deal. <laughs> Was his hair just kind of moving? Yeah. Like same wind. Looks like a pretty good bull. Gave us a real good broadside shot. That is such an awesome bull. And we can't, oh man, we haven't been in camp for two hours, guys. It's wrong. We're gonna use all our good karma up. Hey, I think we got the good karma with this man. Yeah. <laughs> We're still eating sandwiches and he spotted that thing. That's the way to do it. 750 yards, 759 yards. There's another bowl there too. We're at. Just down below, to the left, down yep, below and to him. the left. That's a good bowl. Got him, you see him, mate? Yeah. That's right. a very good bowl. We should take him. Let's do it. Double. You got like right seven. Another quick Yeah. Thirteen point two. On him. Everybody on him. Yeah, I'm on him. Two shots, two bulls, two hours. That's how to start, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shot, awesome. bro. That shot was, that was easy. Was Mike already shot. had the window. That was a great shot. Perfect. Holy smoke. Two for two. Right two, two hours, two for two bulls, and that by stomping big bulls. Nice. Well, I mean, usually the deal is biggest animal goes this way. That's always the way it works. And if you ever try to mess with that karma, you just the hunt will go south. Yeah. So you just got to go with the flow. Mike shoots first, you're gonna see a big one first, you let him shoot it, and then the karma's good. Hey, boom, boom. boom, boom. Two, two boom, shots, boom. two bulls. Okay, Zion was thinking we were gonna be done by Wednesday night. We were calling BS. But we might have hope. We might be fishing after all. Sweet. Good shooting, Aaron. Yeah, you too, bro. I think you missed by about this much. Like I said, you had the window for me. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it hit right it right hit right. exactly yeah. where that minute of wind drift. Right at the just my shoulder I just dropped it. Right. Right.
sore feet. Oh, I'm just gonna tighten these up so I get a little more lateral support. I had the helicopter tighten before, now I'm doing the side heel tighten. Get these babies dialed in. Well, should be a couple dead tar laying over there. Unless they're bulletproof, so we'll see. We keep running into these little ups and downs. It's about twice as far as it looks. Time to go to the bottom. But we're getting closer. Uh, you know, in some aspects, this, this has a, a lot of the feel of hunting in Hawaii. Uh, you're very steep, very rugged mountains, but regardless, you get the opportunity to see ocean, and you know, you're up above the clouds, and with this Mount Cook in the background here, and all the snow, it's, it's perfect backdrop. It gives you the sense of the, that true mountain adventure. Uh, we found where my bow was standing when I shot him. All these rocks kind of look the same when you get close. Uh, we found the spot where Mike's bow was bedded down, just right up there. Followed some dirt sign down. Uh, identified this spot, and then here we go down there. We've got two dead bull tar. You know, I don't know how far we got on the running and how far we got on the sliding, but we're going to try real hard to make sure we don't experience the sliding part, huh? Slow and steady. It's, uh, it's extra slippery. A little more graceful. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> little hooks on there. Look at that boy. Woo! What a stud. Oh. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. What a bruiser. Oh yeah. Wow. Nice. 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 Hey. Hair's dark. Monster. Very nice. Well done, man. Sweet. Oh, that's an old bow too. That was a steep trip down. 51 degrees. We figured it was steeper than that coming down. That is a big bow tie. So how do you tell on the edge? On the edge, you just count the rings. So they're going to be real tight in the base. And then you do some mass measurements on yeah. them too. Yeah. yeah, that is awesome. Oh, man, you got some mass all the way up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half years old. Holy smokes. That's an old bull. That could be the oldest one we've ever shot. We've shot some tens, but eleven and a half. Look how dark this hair is. Awesome. Yeah. It's black. We've talked about karma and how that all works out. Usually Mike shoots a bigger one. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's I think he's busted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a monster. Well, look at the hair on that thing. Let's, yeah. go, let's go check that out. That one just makes my hair stand up my Look at that thing. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's another old boy. Yeah, Sweet. Look at the look at the hair on that. Oh, that just is as dark. Amazing. Yeah. Oh look at this. Dude that is that is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Always the good hair. Every yeah, time. Always the good hair. Yeah. We, go, we go shoot bears, he always gets the good one. Look at this back here. Yeah, that is. When I saw him, I didn't actually see the horn, but I saw all this long hair coming down over his butt, and I knew he was an old bull. It's a good Holy indication. Smokes. He's broomed off a bit, he's busted off chunks, but that's cool too. One, two, three, four, five, oh, wow. six. Dude, that is. He's seven. Seven and a half. That is phenomenal hair on that thing there. Amazing hair. This this is why you come chase a car. Yeah. Just for this mount right yeah, here. That's right. What this thing will look like up on the wall. Yeah. Beautiful. I think Mike's gonna have to break down and do a full body for once. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking this full body. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, that is the best cape I've seen in ages. Look at lot, the, the length of here all the way to the all back. All the way. That's well, just yeah, just contrasting against cool. that one. Yeah. It's like, you well, can't I, find any thin spots there. I picked that ball as having a poor cape, because mm -hmm. that means it's super old. Yeah. Because they get that old, he's probably only, he's probably only live another year or two, and he's that old, he can't even grow a good, a good yeah. hairy cape. So, uh, so, bigger horns, but the trophy is well, the it, that's right. I think Mike's that's got right. me. Yeah. So I, I'd say he's still, he's still up on me. <laughs> Sweet. And to have two two bowls this far apart. Well, they come down that same chute, didn't they? Really yeah. Bit the dust. We're quite fortunate with this hunt because um, with the gunworks systems of, of long range rifles, we didn't have to get as close as we would normally have to do. And so that was a definite advantage on this hunt. We're able to, once we spotted a good animal, get within range pretty fast. Um, we definitely had some good challenges, particularly on the recovery of the tower. Just getting back to camp, we did a, a pretty major mountain climb and we ended up in the dark. It took us three hours to get back to camp. So that, that's pretty unusual. Normally, we're not that far from camp and normally it's not that difficult of a hike back. So definite. Definitely a challenge there, but um, we got it done.